Another name for 3D printing is additive manufacturing. It's this idea that you take a certain feedstock material and add it to a product as it's being built and slowly and slowly deposit material where it's needed to create the final object. Most applications of 3D printing lay down one layer of material at a time. That's the way your desktop 3D printer works. It's the way most people have done it at scale. As you scale up 3D printing, the FDM model, fused deposition modeling, really starts to show its limitations. Those limitations are time, material, because you're literally building out the entire skin, all the structure out of this layered plastic, which is probably very strong, but it's also extremely heavy when you start layering that stuff on. For example, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, they have a large machine called the BAM. It's the size of this room. That's exactly what it does. It lays down one layer of plastic on top of another to build up whatever shape they want. They have made cars, they have made walls, they have made small demonstration houses in that facility. It works. You can make large objects that way. Large-scale 3D printing in the construction arena has grown in the last few years. What's interesting is people tried to scale 3D printing to a large format. They literally took the exact same, very comfortable gantry style that they had on their desktop and they scaled it up. And one of the problems with that is that your gantry now has to be larger than your product that you're building. Layered concrete printing is the manifestation of that in the construction arena to date. And so most traditional 3D printing in the construction arena is limited where a big machine has to be transported to the job site and works with this one material and the machine has to be bigger than the object or building that it's printing itself. And that works for some things, but when you're trying to do that on site, especially for construction or if you're trying to build a car or a bus, uh, it makes for a really large product. The reality is product industry doesn't make things monolithic. The product industry creates things as individual parts and they're assembled together. And there's a lot of value in understanding how you can change products on the fly, you can be more nimble, you can adapt, be personalized, customized, instead of being huge and monolithic. Branch's fundamental innovation in the 3D printing space is a process called cellular fabrication, or CFAB. And that is built upon a new capability that we call freeform 3D printing. Freeform 3D printing is fundamentally different than traditional layered deposition. With freeform printing, we extrude fiber-reinforced polymers that solidify in the air as they're extruded. That process allows us to print the same volumetric quantities of traditional large-scale and construction 3D printers, but we use 20 times less material to accomplish that same volume. We avoid the volumetric problem of having to lay down an enormous amount of plastic to create the shape by creating our lattice structure. Instead of simply laying down one layer at a time, we actually fill up our volumes with a three-dimensional structure, with that lattice or truss or matrix structure. So that allows us to create these really lightweight and optimized geometries that use minimal material to build up the form that you're looking for. So it's really about material optimization and design freedom. And at the same time, we don't sacrifice print speed. The fact that we're using less material means that there's less path for the robot to trace through as it's printing. So that really allows us to be fast and repeatable to speed up the efficiency of construction. Prefabrication has been studied intensively in the last several decades as a highly efficient and productive form of construction as opposed to on-site processes. We have a lot of companies that are very interested in us taking our technology on site, but the reality is that's not where the efficiency lies. The efficiency lies in a production facility that isn't affected by weather, uh, we can work 24 hours a day, and we can produce what they want at the timetable they need. And so we're combining additive manufacturing and prefabrication at the same time. So it's, it's taking the best practices of the manufacturing industry at large for consumer products or, or other things that might be manufactured in a factory environment, combining that with construction prefabricated tenants that are guiding productivity and efficiency you know, at scale in the construction industry and mixing that with additive manufacturing. And so it's really the first time that in a construction arena, prefabrication and additive manufacturing have existed uh, cohesively.